Thousands of people will join the Virginia Tech community this weekend as the university remembers the April 16th tragedy. It was nearly a decade ago when 32 people were killed and 17 wounded. The events beginning Friday will honor the 32 as well as the survivors, families and first responders. Among them, survivor Kevin Stern, who has remained part of the community since that day. Looking at the semicircle of hokey stones, one for each life lost April 16th, Kevin Stern knows who he'll walk for in the run for remembrance Saturday. And you have the thing that says, who do you run for? And for me, it's been always been Michael Pole. The two sat next to each other in German class 10 years ago. You know, it's the, the random, you know, five minutes or whatnot that you have where you're both sitting there before class starts and like, hey, did you do, get this homework done? Just, yeah, that was, that was tough. Kevin was shot twice on April 16th. You know, afterwards, there were a couple of people who were, you know, getting up and, and walking around or you know, kind of checking people out, and I wasn't able to do that. And then kind of realizing, you know, what, you know, where I'd been shot and, and that I couldn't walk or anything like that. A photo of four police officers carrying him out of Norris Hall became an iconic image of the tragedy and appeared around the world. It certainly replays kind of that you know, five to ten second stretch of being carried out of the building and and down the down the grass there to the ambulance. So. Years later, the reminder remained. Any time there was another mass shooting or any kind of reference to it, it was tied like to my name. You know, my name would say like, "Oh, this is Kevin Stern from the Virginia Tech." You know, April sixteenth. Kevin doesn't talk about that day much, although his recovery and return to Virginia Tech, first to receive his diploma, again as a graduate student, and now to work as an engineer, speaks volumes. It was a very familiar place, and I couldn't imagine going somewhere else and starting out new, you know, without any friends or that kind of thing. Being here, he says, helped him cope, it helped him heal, and perhaps helps him prepare for the 10th anniversary. It's more of a reflection of past anniversaries even too, you know, what was the first one like and what was the second one, you know, maybe what was the fifth one, what was last year. This year things are a little different. Now a father, Kevin says he has new perspective. You know, puts it in the perspective of what if that was my son, you know, what if, what if that was, um, and that's certainly a, a different, different take on it that I haven't had yet. Sunday will be about remembering. It's remembering all the people that were involved that day, all the people you know, who lost their lives or the people who helped save me, um, the first responders and the doctors. And the people, strangers even, in this community and across the world who offered support. And then even to the people that you know, wrote letters, you know, elementary school kids you know, and, and stuff that made you know, um, to up to you know, 87 year old grandmas that wrote me a poem and, and mailed it, you know, it's kind of remembering all that and just being thankful for, for those people. Including people like Michael Pole's family, who he only got to know out of tragedy. Especially now, like meeting his family and knowing who he was and that he's no longer here. People across the nation are expected to honor the victim Sunday as we mark 10 years. The Washington Nationals and the New York Yankees will hold a moment of silence Sunday before their games. As you may remember, the Yankees came to Blacksburg 11 months after the tragedy. The team, including Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez, had an exhibition game with the Virginia Tech baseball team and visited the April 16th memorial.